Hey, welcome back to WCAST. You know, it's been quite a while. This show's been off the air for almost one and a half years. But with the favorite film of millions reaching its 50th anniversary, I knew I had to do something. So now it's time to make up for lost time. But first, a few announcements. For one, I maintained a presence in the Mad World fan community by attending four major Mad World screenings. These included three showings at the theater built to show the film, the Cinerama Dome in Hollywood. Two of these, on September 30th, 2012 and April 28th, 2013, were regular screenings. At the one in April, Barry Chase, Marvin Kaplan, Karen Kramer, and Mickey Rooney all got together for a pre-show panel discussion. This panel was reprised at the special 50th anniversary screening on October 27th, 2013. More on that later. As exciting as that panel was, no panel will ever be able to match the July 9th, 2012 one at the screening held by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. For this panel, almost all the surviving stars of Mad World and even some important production staff members came to share their memories. Jonathan Winters, Mickey Rooney, Carl Reiner, Marvin Kaplan, Stan Freeberg, Barry Chase, Karen Kramer, Mad World casting director Lynn Stalmaster, and script supervisor Marshall Schloem made up the panel and comedian Billy Crystal, a lifelong fan of the film, emceed. I had the privilege to sit in the front row for this screening, and it's truly an experience I will never forget. One of the best parts of the screening at the Academy was the chance to see and hear Jonathan Winters reminisce about the film. He had quite a few great stories to tell, as well as some of the best jokes of the evening. For me, it was really a special experience to be there and listen to these anecdotes from Jonathan Winters, who I think is one of the best comedians who's ever lived. Unfortunately, the Academy screening turned out to be his last. Jonathan Winters kicked the bucket on April 11, 2013, at the age of 87. I had always hoped to interview him for WCAST, but plans never materialized. Whatever the outcome of this, however, we'll always have his superb performance as put-upon truck driver Lenny Pike in It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. In happier news, I was interviewed by Paul Scrabo and George Ann Muller in 2012 about my contributions to Mad World Research. Soon afterward, I met Kat and Karen Kramer, and then acted in several theater productions, including, but not limited to, How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, Love's Labor's Lost, Scrooge, Bye Bye Birdie, Singing in the Rain, and, you guessed it, Anything Goes, for the third time. The night is young, the skies are clear. It's delightful, it's delicious, it's delightful. Also, I shot my first feature film, lost 40 pounds, gained a few inches, and starred in multiple web series projects. Finally, in WCAST news, I interviewed Barry Chase, who played Dick Sean's wildly dancing, bikini-clad girlfriend in the film. In my hour-and-a-half interview with Miss Chase last month, she shed light on a whole lot of Mad World questions that have long gone unanswered. I really enjoy getting to know the woman behind the dancer and actress, and I think you will too. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce the one and only Barry Chase, speaking about her experience while filming It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. In this film, you barely speak, but you rather spend most of your time on screen dancing wildly without ever changing your expression. How'd you come up with your character? Uh, I wish I could say that I came up with it, but I actually <clears throat> didn't. Um, I was, uh, I, I accidentally ran into a, an old friend of mine and asked him, you know, what are you doing, what are you doing? And I mentioned what I was doing and I also said that uh, I really didn't know what to do with it. I, I didn't have a hook for it. I didn't know how to go about, you know, doing this. I mean, when I just stand there dancing, you know, I didn't know what to do. I had to have some kind of, something to hang on. And uh, so he said to me, well, you noticed that my name was Mrs. Halliburton in there. And he said, is Dick your husband? And I said, no. <laughs> no, uh -uh. So he said, well, you're in a beach shack with a guy that's not your husband, so you're probably stoned. <laughs> so, <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably my granddaughter. And I said, so I, um, I like that idea a lot. I thought, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's what I. That's that, that. gave me a whole thing to go. So that, hence, and also, when I got there and I saw, I had worked with Dick once before in Opposite Sex, so I, I, I knew how Dick worked, and uh, he's completely works within his own sphere, uh, and does his wild, wonderful things. 
and I thought, I can't interact with that. That's not going to happen. And so that's really good to be stoned because we'll be two isolated people that are just there. And, uh, and so that's the way it worked. I remember once Dick said to me, uh, I actually think he said it afterwards, not at the time, when he saw the actual footage at the premiere. And he said, here I am doing all that stuff. And nobody's looking at anything but your legs. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good guy, liked it. And actually, even though he was isolated in his work, he was very easy to work with. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't infringe upon you. He let you do your thing. He didn't want to take from you. And some people do do that. Uh -huh. And he did not do that. That's all from Barry Chase for today, but never fear, she'll be back in the coming weeks to answer more of your questions, right here on WCAST. Now it's time to hear from the acclaimed special effects head of Mad World, Danny Lee. Danny, who was my first cousin twice removed, came up with ingenious ways to perform almost every physical special effect in the movie. These include the Smiler's car, the close-up ladder shots, the fireworks scene, Phil Silver's a sinking car, all the explosions, and much more. Danny's already covered a lot of these bases in previous episodes. Today, however, he'll be answering a few questions posed by his admirers last year. Ladies and gentlemen, Danny Lee. David Dahl asks, Didn't anybody notice at the time that the Abe Lincoln statue's hands are rubbery? Yes, but there were, was a reason for that. We flew him on wires into the lap and arms of the statue, and uh, it would hurt him if we had a statue, a heart statue. Did anybody notice at the time how the stars, particularly Sylvester, alternate between being inside and outside of the fire escape? Uh, it was the uh, script girl responsibility to notice that and make it no. How would the stunts and special effects would have been, uh, how would they have been done differently today? Computer. I might qualify that by saying that um, you need some live action with computers, but uh, computers have came on to their own and have taken over. That's all from Danny for today, but if you're excited for more from our resident master of the special effects, he'll be back on WCAST in the near future. For our final guest today, I'm proud to introduce Marvin Kaplan, who played Irwin, one of the Milk Toast gas station attendants. Marvin has many great recollections of working on the film, and he shared them with me in our 2012 interview. In this episode, we'll learn more about life on the set. Here's Marvin. I heard it was pretty hot out there in the desert, so... Very hot. Was there much interaction between members of the cast and you know, members of the crew? And What's her name couldn't uh, handle the heat? Uh, Dorothy Provine. She would turn green at a certain time every day. Every day. You, you could set your clock by it. Uh, she couldn't handle the heat. Um, Jonathan had problems with the heat. And there was only one air-conditioned trailer. My job was really as a babysitter to make sure that Jonathan stayed in that trailer until they were ready to uh, film him. And uh, 
I had a, one problem with the heat. I was fine as long as I didn't drink ice cold water. But one day I drank ice cold water and I fainted. Mm -hmm. the, the temperatures were so extreme. When you drink very cold liquid, your body can't handle it. Um, what was the mood on the set overall of the time you were Very shooting? funny and very businesslike. Uh, uh, Mr. Kramer didn't allow any of us to ad lib. The only one whom he, whom he gave his head to could do whatever he wanted in, in, in terms of supplying dialogue was Phil Silvers. The rest of us had to either repeat the dialogue we had or, or just say, I'll oh, sure, well, whatever, but we couldn't include new dialogue. The only one he trusted was Phil. Mm -hmm. um, were you ever involved in any of Phil Silvers' on-set uh, on crap games? Never. I don't gamble. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil was very big on horses. And I remember one time, uh, they had to drive us to a phone early in the morning to make sure he could place a bet. Mm -hmm. But they were wonderful people. All of them were great people. Terry Thomas was marvelous. Merman was great. Uh, Milton was very nice. Um, Buddy Hackett was all right. Uh, Rooney, I mean, they were very wonderful actors. They were all great actors. Mm -hmm. And Kramer did not feel comfortable with comedians. He felt much more comfortable with serious actors. And that's all from our guests for today. A big thank you goes out to these three wonderful people who have agreed to be a part of WCAST and share their recollections with the Mad World fans. Make sure to stay tuned for more from our guests coming very soon. Finally, I'd like to wish Mad World a happy 50th anniversary. It's been a great first 50 years and I can't wait to see what happens in the second. Here's to It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. Thanks for watching WCAST.